Um, thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, my name is uh, Mario Riscalal. For those of you who don't know me, I'm VP Sales here at Agola. And uh, right now, we are waiting for, for everyone to join in. So we are going to wait just a couple of minutes. I'm actually seeing the number of, of participants going up every, every couple of seconds. So the plan is to wait one or two minutes, and then we'll, we'll get started with the, with the webinar. Hello, everyone. Um, just a little update for those of you who are just joining in. Uh, my name is Maris Kalal. I'm going to be guiding you to the webinar today. And uh, we are just waiting one or two minutes more uh, to give the chance uh, for everyone to join. Uh, from the counter, I see we are already 122. I'm not sure if you are able to see that as well. Um, so we're quite overwhelmed uh, by, by how many people are joining us today. I'm super looking forward to to explaining you more about our products. I see that there, everyone is writing so many different countries. Very nice. Thank you very much for joining. Hello again, everyone. Um, yes, another little update for, for the newcomers. Um, my name is Mary Scalal. I'm uh, the person who's going to be guiding you to the, to the webinar today. Uh, we are just waiting um, a couple of uh, seconds more. I think I will wait until 15.03 uh, to officially start the, um, the webinar. Um, I just see that there's people that keep joining in, so that's that's why I'm just uh, waiting a little longer. Um, yes, so I think we are going to go for it now. Uh, so bear with me while the slides uh, load, they're, they're coming in. Okay, so official uh, welcome to everyone uh, to the Microgas uh, Excel uh, live webinar today. Um, the, the motivation behind this webinar is to um, to show you, to showcase the, our new product line, the Microgas Excel unit. And uh, just want to say that our initial plan was actually to hold uh, a demo day here in our installations in Berlin, in our workshop. We did this uh, with the previous product line, the Microgas S, and with other products we've released into the market. But uh, we had to adapt to circumstances and uh, and do it online, something I'm really excited about. Uh, so here we are. Let's, uh, let's start. Um, here we have the, the agenda for today. It's going to take an hour. We're going to try to stick uh, as far as possible to, to the time. So we finish at uh, 4 PM uh, Berlin time. The program is a combination of a couple of different things. So we have uh, slides. We have some pre-recorded videos. We also have a live demo, especially for the startup and operation part of the, of the webinar today. And we also have at the very end a Q&A session. Um, so I just wanted to say that for any questions you have, uh, yes, drop them on the chat. And we have uh, some colleagues that are actually collecting the questions. And then uh, they will release them uh, at the end in the Q&A. So any questions you have, please go ahead and ask. Uh, I will be very happy to reply them later on. Um, just a little introduction to the team that's uh, going to be on board today on the webinar. Uh, myself, I'm Maris Calal. I'm originally from Spain. Uh, I'm Vice President uh, Sales here at Advola, and uh, I have uh, eight years of experience in market development in the wastewater treatment sector, mostly introducing new technologies into the market. I used to work for Kubota Membrane before, specializing MBR technologies. 
uh, I have a master's in modern waste retreatment engineering by Cranfield University. Um, our CTO is uh, Johanna Schutz. So she's a very experienced uh, process engineer uh, that's focused in R&D for uh, wastewater treatment technologies. And she's, uh, let's say, one of the, the core uh, components of our team and the brain of the microgas technology. And then we have uh, Melanie Haverland. She's uh, our lead process engineer. Uh, she will be taking part in the in the Q&A later, supporting me in the more technical questions. Uh, she has uh, five years of experience, and she's uh, uh, specialized in the commercialization and implementation of different water and wastewater treatment technologies, uh, including RO, UF, and, and other technologies. And currently, she's the, the person in charge of process design of uh, flotation systems uh, with uh, micro technologies, and also for the case of adaptation of existing plants uh, to retrofit with, with microgas. I have to apologize that uh, actually Johanna is not here today for last minute uh, personal reasons she couldn't join, but uh, we will have, we will uh, attend your questions between Melanie and myself at the end of the session. Okay, so a really brief note on Angola. So we are a German water technology company. We were founded in 2013 and we are a spin-off of the Technical University of Berlin. Uh, what we strive for or what we do is uh, we concentrate in uh, developing new technologies that are more energy efficient and they require less maintenance than the alternative uh, state of the art in the market. So that's what we've done with microgas and with aquaflows. Um, we have about uh, 24 employees right now and the core values that we, we abide by are sustainability, innovation, agility and inclusion. Here in this slide, I just wanted to give you a very quick work overview of the technologies we mainly work with. On the left side, you see the agroflow process. Uh, it's a combination of flotation and uh, ceramic uh, flat sheet membrane uh, filtration. This is a physical chemical process that we use mostly for hard to treat wastewaters in the metalworking, refinery, and upstream oil and gas industry. The microgas technology that we're talking about today is what you see on the right. And uh, this technology was first uh, utilized within the agroflow process. That's why I'm also mentioning here the agroflow process and the sort of waters where the, the microgas unit was uh, first implemented within. Uh, the picture on the right, uh, it's sort of the microgas S series. Uh, this is the, uh, the, the first series that we released. And right now, today, we're talking about the microgas XL series. In a nutshell, so a little bit about microgas. So let's say the core innovation or the breakthrough of microgas is its ability to generate uh, microbubbles, the, its ability to generate uh, white water at low pressure uh, and without the need of dissolving gas in water. This, let's say this, this uh, ability that this unit has or this technology has implies that uh, we can design uh, flotation systems that are more simple in, its, in their configuration, that are more energy efficient, and also that they are more compact in terms of uh, footprint and also volume than conventional technologies. Um, we are reaching the end of the of the of the first uh, keynote uh, of the opening of the, say, of the of the seminar, and here I want to introduce uh, a poll question for everyone. So I just want to um, to um, I think we we should uh, look into. Uh, what is our main interest? So why are we here today? Uh, what are the main applications within flotation that interest uh, the group? Uh, what are the capacities? Are we interested in uh, large scale uh, flotation systems, low scale, uh, small scale flotation systems? Or also are we more interested in uh, retrofitting or are we more interested in like new, uh, new installations? So you will see the poll question coming in now and we will share the results afterwards. And uh, uh, this will also serve for me to be able to a little adapt my speech uh, depending on, on what interest you, you have. You can click at as many uh, boxes as, as, as you want. Uh, if you go down, you will see uh, at, the, at the top, it's more about the, the applications and markets. And uh, below, you have the choice between retrofitting or new installations, and also a choice between large scale and small scale uh, plants. Just want to say as well for those of you, of you who are, are just uh, who has, have joined later, just uh, who missed uh, the very beginning. My name is Maris Kalal. I am uh, the I am the VP Sales here at Acola, and I'm going to be running you through this seminar. 
uh, webinar, sorry. And uh, um, yes, if you have any questions, please do ask them. There's a chat for this, and we are uh, we are collecting these questions, and we'll try to address as much as as, ma as many as possible at the end of the session. Um, okay, so let's see the results. Uh, you have a couple of more seconds, and uh, yeah, that's it. Okay, so I think 96 people replied. We have 62 percent of uh, of uh, all the participants uh, gave a reply. It seems that in terms of applications, from what I see now, there's a lot of you that are interested in municipal and also in food and beverage. Quite interesting, okay. Uh, and there's no clear winner, I would say. Okay, most of you are interested as well in new installations and also in larger scale. But it seems that there's like a 50-50 uh, difference between the uh, large scale and small installations. So right? very interesting. Thank you very much for, for participating. And we're going to move on to the next uh, part of the, of the agenda today. OK, so we are now uh, in the uh, show, product showcase. I'm just going to go through a couple of slides and very basic concept, concepts about uh, the technology. And then we're going to show you a video where we actually uh, explain the technology. We, we recorded this video specifically for, for today. So, well, let's, uh, let's go ahead with this first concept. OK, I just wanted to make clear uh, everyone understands how we generate the, the microbubbles with the uh, microbubble uh, with the with the microreacts. So basically, what we're doing here is we are injecting pressurized air in a hollow shaft that uh, holds a series of discs, ceramic discs, vertically installed, and this shaft is rotating by the effect of a motor. So basically, what we're doing is we're generating small bubbles on the surface of the disc by the diffusion of the gas through the pores of the of the disc. And then we're cutting these bubbles uh, by the shear force generated by the rotation when these bubbles are still very small. So we are generating, generally speaking, uh, bubbles between 40 and 60 microns uh, with, this met with, with this method. OK? There will be more about it in the video. Um, about the MicroS uh, Excel series, so basically uh, this, uh, this, this unit uh, these are the main specs of the unit. Uh, the important uh, values for you, since we're talking about rotation, uh, is that the unit can treat between 30 and 50 cubic meters per hour of flotation uh, capacity. And that uh, this depends, of course, on the water quality, the air to solids ratio that we're using, and so on. In terms of footprint, we are talking about a unit that weighs, sorry, that uh, has a dimensions of 0.4 times 1.2 meters, it's about half a square meter in, in footprint, and it weighs approximately 120 kilos. These are the core components of the unit. Um, so we have the ceramic disc, the air intake cap. We will see a, a further explanation about this in the video. The motor that's installed underneath the shaft of the, of the micro vest. And also the, the spacer, which is a patented spacer by Angola Technologies. Um, I didn't say it before, but just before we go into, into the video as well, I wanted to emphasize that the breakthrough of MicroS Excel series uh, in comparison with, uh, with the MicroS S, that's what we had uh, until now, is that uh, we changed the, the installation method. It's a dropping installation method, which makes the retrofitting of existing plants easier. And generally speaking, the installation uh, uh, easier. And also that we are bringing the benefits of direct bubble generation to a larger segment of the market. So uh, we, we can treat uh, higher flow rates uh, than we, we did before. So we usually use uh, the MicroS S series for smaller installations of less than 30 cubic meters per hour. And now with the MicroS Excel series, we can address anything uh, above uh, 30 cubic meters per hour. A real a small wrap up of the technical facts before we go into the video. So the, the disc of the microgas Excel is a ceramic disc of aluminum oxide material with uh, two micron pore size. The operating pressure ranges between 0 0.2 and 2.5 bar. So normally it's 0 0.5. Uh, we only go up to 2.5 during the tune up. I will explain that later. Uh, we, use, uh, we can use any sort of gas for, for the formation of bubbles. Um, the system is a, has an automatic cleaning uh, method. I will explain as well more about that later. 
and it can withstand, uh, withstand extreme temperatures and pHs. Uh, the installation method is a drop-in, and it's one modular technology, uh, which means that we can install several or many units uh, per, per plant to, to increase the capacity. So uh, now we're going to air for the first time the, the video of the Microbus Excel. I hope you enjoy it, and I see you on the other side. Just bear with me for a second. It's loading. I'll take my camera off and it should. Hello and welcome to the MicroS Excel series product presentation. What you have right here behind me is the fully functional MicroS 30 Excel units. I have here as well a couple of core elements that I will use to guide you through the explanation of how the system works. Uh, we also have a dedicated lifting tool for a MicroS Excel unit that we use to lift it and connect it to the, to the crane when it's going to be installed or taken out of the tank. If we look at uh, the different uh, conventional technologies available in the market for flotation, these uh, usually uh, use uh, pressure to dissolve gas in the water to later produce, again, gas in the form of microvolts. So we set ourselves uh, the, the challenge to develop a technology that was able to generate these microbubbles without the need of, uh, of doing this, of dissolving the gas in the water. What we're doing is we are generating the microbubbles directly without having to do this. And this spares energy, equipment, and cost associated to maintenance and operation of the systems. What we see here is the MicroS Excel. This is a new series that has been developed in order to bring these benefits also to the larger scale DAF systems and also to be able to retrofit uh, existing DAFs very easily. This device has an installation method that we call drop-in and this means basically that the unit is completely submersible and that once it's installed in the tank it can be easily lifted and reinstalled in the tank without even having to drain the tank. And the second important point uh, or optimization that we did uh, on the technology is the footprint. So this uh, device is also very efficient in terms of footprint. This unit here has uh, just about double the footprint of the largest unit of the Series S. Uh, however, it can treat up to five times more flow rate than the largest unit from the Series S. So how does this uh, device work? So on this side, we see the air intake cap. That's where the pressurized air is fed from the compressor. The air flows through this shaft and comes out through the disc that we see mounted on the shaft. Below, we have a motor. Uh, that's the one that's going to produce the rotation of the shaft. So how do we produce the bubbles? Basically, there's two mechanisms involved in the production of the bubbles. One of them is the diffusion of the gas through the porous disc. And the second mechanism is the shear force that's generated through the rotation of the shaft. So basically what we're doing, we are generating very small bubbles in the surface of the disc, which then are cut of this surface whilst they're ver still very small uh, thanks to the shear force generated by the rotation. This unit that you see here is able to treat between 30 and 50 cubic meters per hour of water. It also produces uh, between 12 and 75 normal liters of gas per minute in the form of bubbles and all the elements that you see here are uh, chemically resistant, so they can withstand harsh uh, pH conditions and temperatures up to 60 degrees. Here we have a, a disc. It's a ceramic disc, as I mentioned before, and the material of the ceramic is alumina oxide. And the internal structure of this disc is quite particular because it's formed of channels which are curved. And the function of this internal structure is to uh, ensure uh, correct distribution of the gas throughout the whole disk and also to make sure that we have an even uh, formation of microbubbles throughout the whole surface of the disk. This is the Agvola patented spacer. Basically what this spacer does is that in combination with the disk by stacking them together we form the shaft that we see here. Uh, this design was determined through CFD simulations in order to optimize the fluid dynamics inside the shaft of the microS. The third element I want to talk about is actually the air intake cap that's placed here at the end of the shaft. 
This inlet cap also has a special uh, design which was developed in order to eliminate the resonance and the vibration that can come in the airline. Last but not least, I want to talk about the motor. This motor was selected based on our experience working in the oil and gas refinery and uh, metalworking industry. And we wanted to make sure that uh, it's very resilient to harsh environmental conditions. There's only two connection points. One of them is the power supply to the motor and the air connection. The Micro-S XL unit is a submersible piece of equipment that is thought to make the retrofit of existing installations an easy process and it's also thought to take the benefits of direct microbubble generating technology into larger scale installations. Hello everyone, I hope that you, you enjoyed the video, that uh, you're all still, still there with us. Um, we're going to move on with, uh, with the next slide. Okay, so now I'm going to talk uh, briefly about uh, the benefits of uh, micro S flotation systems, so how we compare with uh, other alternatives in the market or with conventional technology. The first uh, thing I want to talk about is the, the installation or the, the say, design configuration of the, of the process. On the right side, you see uh, a, schem a schematic uh, picture of a micro S system. As you see, the, the micro S is installed within the contact zone of the, of the flotation unit, and there's no recirculation. Okay, this is the, the main difference with what you see at the left. That's a typical configuration of a dissolved air flotation system that requires, uh, uh, let's say, a recycle stream with pumps, valves, uh, normally saturation vessels, and, and instruments. So let's say by by uh, implementing micro S and designing a micro S. Uh, micro flotation system, we can avoid the installation of all these units and therefore also avoid the, the, the need for maintaining them or replacing them over time. So let's say this is the, the, the a core uh, advantage of our system, I would say simplicity of uh, construction, operation and maintenance. If we talk about uh, retrofitting, I just wanted to give you a little hint uh, here. Um, what you see on the left is what we discussed in the video, or I even mentioned before, like the drop-in installation of the micro XL uh, unit. So basically, the unit uh, to be retrofitted into an existing tank, we don't uh, normally have to modify the, the structure of the tank. Uh, we have to install it within the contact zone, and this can be done uh, even if the tank is uh, underground or if the, if the wall of the tank cannot be perforated. The typical benefits that we see uh, by retrofitting installations uh, with the micro S technology uh, is sometimes an improvement of the removal efficiency. We see this because uh, most of the time, some of the drivers that say that uh, uh, take customers and clients to, to, go, to go for micro S technology are problems related to uh, nozzle clogging or dealing with, uh, with solids in the recirculation line. So when we actually uh, install micro S, uh, the white water quality improves and also with it the removal efficiency. Uh, we also can increase the hydraulic capacity of the systems. I will go into, to, into more detail in the next slide about this uh, in, the, in one of the slides coming up. So basically, as we don't have recirculation, uh, we can work with, uh, with, uh, with a higher flow rate, a higher treatment flow rate, and keep the same HRT required for, the, for, for a, a appropriate separation of solids and liquids. Also, reduction in operational and maintenance. And uh, talking about ROIs, so in, in when, let's say when, when we talk about ROIs in uh, retrofitting installations, uh, we find uh, uh, examples where, where we can reach ROIs between one and two, and two years. This depends uh, highly on, on different parameters, energy price, and, and also the cost of maintenance. But uh, I just wanted to give you an idea of, of what is achievable with, uh, with micro technology. In terms of energy, uh, I just wanted to, to say that uh, we are consistently uh, below 0 0.05 kilowatt hours per, per cubic meter. Um, this is the energy uh, that, that, that require, is required to generate the, the microbubble. This means the, the energy, the power supply to the motor and the power supply to the compressor. Um, and this is enough in, in, in any circumstance. It's not, it's not dependent, for example, on on salinity of the water, on temperature of the water, uh, we, we don't have to dissolve the gas in the water, so, and we are therefore not, uh, uh, not affected by Henry's law of, of uh, gas dissolution in water. 
Uh, what you see here in the in the in this slide is a, a benchmark of uh, of data from real installations uh, that we we found in the market. Um, these are installations using conventional resolve rotation systems. The, the the dark gray are with uh, systems that employ pressure vessels, uh, and the ones on the right uh, uh, with like the lighter gray are systems that employ two phase pumps. Uh, the conclusion from from this uh, from from this survey is that uh, we are consistently below, and that it's much uh, lower. Let's say the, the energy consumption that we that we can hit. Um, yeah, and uh, this is also because we don't have the recirculation pump, which uh, we we have identified as well as one of the the main uh, power consuming elements in in commercial software rotation systems. Coming back to the to the uh, what we mentioned at the beginning, so when we talk about uh, volume requirements for for rotation plants, so how can MicroS uh, uh, achieve that uh, MicroS is, uh, based rotation systems have a lower volume requirement? So basically, the idea is that for for a fixed HRT, we we can uh, we can treat uh, we can have a, a lower volume than a commercial technology. So if you look at the at the at the left side on the top, we see a flow flow diagram of microgas. We have the water coming in and the water coming out of the system, and which is exactly the same as the water going through the system. There's no recirculation. This is not the case in conventional dust, where you have uh, water coming in, which is the same as the water coming out, uh, of course. But then you also have the water or the flow rate going through the system, which is equal to the inlet flow rate plus the recirculated flow rate. So you have more than 100% of the flow growth going through the system. Just to give you a practical example of what I'm talking about, if we, if we talk, for example, about uh, uh, designing a dissolved rotation system or a rotation system for a slaughterhouse uh, with a, approximately a 30% recirculation rate, um, if we design a microgas rotation system and a DAF system with the same HRT, uh, the, the microgas system would have approximately 23% uh, smaller volume. So this is just because of the fact that we don't have recirculation and therefore we can achieve the same HRT with a lower volume. And also we can look at this from, from another perspective. So if we want to retrofit an existing installation that where you have an existing tank, you could potentially increase the capacity uh, by eliminating the need of recirculating. Okay. So we are already in the next point of the agenda. Uh, what we're going to see in this section is the installation of a, of a microS 30 XL unit in our test stand uh, uh, unit, uh, rotation unit in, in our workshop. I'm going to give you a few hints about the installation again in, in the coming slides. And then I will uh, air the video about the installation that we also prepared specifically for, for today. Okay, so uh, as I said in the beginning, so the, there's an innovation in related to microgas Excel series, which is the drop-in installation that we see on the left. Uh, uh, the microgas S series that uh, we use especially for smaller scaling, uh, smaller, smaller scale plants, sorry, uh, have, has a installation method that is a slide-in version. So here we slide the, the unit to the wall of the tank and the, the motor remains outside the tank and uh, the unit is fixed to the wall of the tank. Um, in order to install the, the microgas uh, micro unit, uh, we, we supply also a lifting tool, which is a, a simple uh, structure with four chains that can be connected to the connecting rings of the, of the microgas Excel unit that uh, allows us to uh, elevate it and install it in the tank. Um, once installed, the, the microgas uh, Excel unit in commercial installations is ins installed with a, a set of guide pipes that allows us to extract it and reinstall it without the need of draining the, the contact zone of the pipe. A little bit about connections. I think you saw this also in the previous video. Just a little comment on it. So the air connection is done through a FESO connector and uh, the power connection is done with a three phase 400 volt uh, standard connector. And just to give you a little bit of background of what ancillary equipment is required. Uh, so the installation of, of microgas uh, is uh, very simple. 
for both series micro SS or Excel or micro SS, uh, what we, we require is an air filter to eliminate uh, oil, uh, particles and humidity from the airline. We have a pressure regulator that's going to allow us to adapt uh, the pressure coming from the compressor down to the operating pressure of the micro gas and a security valve to pro protect uh, mechanically the, the device. Of course, there's other elements that, uh, that we can implement to fully automate and that's uh, uh, what we normally do. But uh, I just wanted to give you an, an overview of what's actually absolutely necessary. Uh, now we're going to go to the, to, the, to the next video. So uh, in the video, you will see that uh, the installation is done in our test stand in, in our workshop. This is, in this case, it's going to be a dry installation. Um, in a, let's say, commercial installation, we would additionally install a set of guide pipes and chains. But uh, in this case, uh, it's, uh, it serves the purpose of showing the concept of how it works and also how quick it, it can be done and how simple it is. So. I hope you enjoyed the video. And actually, I'm going to see you after the video on the other side. Uh, I'm going to move to the, to the workshop. And then we're going to go live. We're going to go in streaming. And we're going to switch on the same unit that we're actually going to see installed now. So let's go for it. Hope you enjoy it. And see you in a little bit. It's loading. Just bear with me for a second. OK, uh, so there you go. Uh, the video is going to start in a, in a couple of seconds. See you in a little bit. Enjoy. The lifting tool is hanging from the crane, and the microvest unit is placed on top of a table in our workshop. The operators are now attaching the lifting tool to the microvest 30 xl unit, using the four connection points located on each corner of both components. We can also see the PP tank of the flotation unit where we will be performing the installation of the Micros 30 XL. For this demonstration, we are using a portable crane with a manually operated winch that, as you can see, allows us to easily lift the unit after it has been securely attached. Once hovering over the edge of the tank, the unit can be displaced to its final position that will be immediately above the contact zone of the flotation tank. We define the contact zone as the first chamber of the tank where the wastewater comes in contact with the microbubbles. The operators now push the crane towards the final position. With the unit hovering over the contact zone, we can proceed to perform the air and power connections. This is a very straightforward procedure. The pressurized air line coming from the compressor is the blue hose that you can see on the side of the tank. This hose is easily plugged into the Festo connector of the air intake cap of the microgas. At the end of the black cable, there's a 400 volt three phase standard connector that will be now plugged in into the power line. That's it. Connections are in place and now we can start lowering the unit into the contact zone to its final position. From the process design perspective, Agvola normally recommends the installation of the microgas unit within a dedicated contact zone. The separation of the contact zone and the flotation zone is achieved by a baffle. This arrangement allows for, on the one hand, optimal mixing in the contact zone, thanks to the turbulence generated by the rotation of the microgas shaft, and on the other hand, we will still have minimal turbulence in the flotation zone to secure optimal separation. The Micros 30XL unit weighs approximately 120 kilos and it's stabilized by its own weight at the bottom of the contact zone. In the Micros S series, the stabilizing of the unit happens by fixing its door plate to the wall of the tank. With the XL series, the unit is simply installed within railings that assure that the unit cannot move laterally 
and that it remains in the installation spot. With the unit resting over the bottom of the contact zone, the four connection points of the lifting tool can be disconnected using a simple handhook. In commercial installations, the unit is usually fitted with a set of guide pipes and chains. This installation mode allows for the Microgas 30XL unit to be extracted from the tank and reinstalled again without the need for drainage of the contact zone. Having disconnected the lifting tool, we proceed to remove it and we can consider that the installation is concluded. The drop-down installation method illustrated here is a key feature of the Microgas XL series that aims to make the installation and retrofitting processes quick and simple. In this case, the whole duration of the process we have just performed was just under 5 minutes. Hello everyone, um, so great. Uh, I, I hope that you enjoyed the installation video. I'm right now here in the Agvola workshop in, in Berlin. Uh, what I have right behind me is the um, microgas flotation test stand that we use to, to simulate different flow and uh, wastewater conditions. And here to my right is my colleague Janik. So he's the, the one who's gonna be uh, uh, operating or uh, adjusting the settings of the of the microgas uh, uh, flotation uh, unit that we have behind us, and we're, what we are doing in this uh, section, which is live, so I just wanted to emphasize that this is live. We are streaming live right now. Uh, is the startup and operation of uh, of a microgas 30 XL uh, flotation unit. The microgas 30 XL is installed within the contact zone of the tank behind me, as you saw in the video, and there's gonna be this is gonna be like a three three-step process. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to uh, switch on the connection of power and uh, air supply to microgas units. Then we're going to go into the tune-up. It's something that we have not uh, mentioned so far, but I will explain uh, what it is about as, 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 soon as, as soon as we get to that point. And then we're just going to observe how the, the white water uh, generates and how we see the bubble bed formed on the surface of, of the tank. Um, and then we will take uh, a closer look with the camera to, to the white water. So this is a very simple process. It's normally completely automated. Today we're going to do it manually for the sake of illustrating uh, step by step uh, what it is about. Um, I have here a timer. And uh, just to show you uh, how long it takes, I'm going to uh, switch on the timer as soon as Janik uh, proceeds to, to start the process. So I'm just going to take the timer. And um, Janik, please go ahead and switch on the, the microS unit. OK, so I hear that the unit started to turn, and I just switched on the timer. Um, Janik is right now switching on or turning the valve for, for the air supply to the unit that comes from, from the compressor. Uh, the power supply is, of course, for the motor, which is, as you know, installed underneath the, the, the shaft of the microgas unit. And uh, right now we've set the, the operational uh, point at 150 RPM, so we can adjust that with a frequency inverter that we have also installed here. And uh, right now, um, also the pressure has been set to 2.1 bars. That's what I see right now. And we have already officially entered the stage of uh, tune-up. OK, so what is a tune-up? The tune-up is the process uh, by which we are going to adapt the, the pressure of the microgas to the operational set point. And this is the pressure at which we are going to observe 
uh, optimal white water generation. Right now we're operating at 2.1 and the operational set point is around uh, 0 0.5 bars for this, uh, for these conditions. Um, the second purpose of the tune-up is to prepare the microgas unit for the operation. Uh, this means that uh, we are going to evacuate the water from within the pores of the ceramic disk uh, to make them available for the flow of gas and the formation of microbubbles. So that's why we are operating at a slightly, slightly higher pressure right now, and then we will go down to the operational set point, which should be around 0 0.5 bars. Um, the whole process of the tune-up is, as I said at the beginning, normally completely automated, and it takes two or three minutes. Uh, during the first uh, uh, couple of minutes, we operate at higher pressure to get to this effect of uh, overcoming the capillary forces inside the pores and uh, clearing the path for air. And then we just slowly start to tune down the, the, the pressure uh, to get to the operational asset point. Once we conclude the tune-up, we can officially say that the, the system is started up. And we will see that the, uh, the white water starts to form. Right now, you see there's quite a lot of turbulence in the tank. And this is related to the fact that we are operating at a higher pressure. Um, additionally to this, I, I wanted to say that with this unit, what we're going to do is we're going to simulate 30 cubic meters per hour um, full flow conditions so that you can actually see the bubbles uh, generated at at this, uh, at, in these conditions and not in static conditions. We, we will do this with a, with a special uh, system that we have here. As I said, this is a test stand, so we use, uh, we use it to test different flow conditions uh, normally. And uh, to give you also a little bit of, of background of, uh, of what we are doing, of, of why we're doing this, uh, this is uh, related to the fact or to the feedback we've got from, from customers, both engineering companies and uh, also some feedback from, from operators uh, that the system is very easy to start up and shut down. So we just so thought it would be a good idea to show it on camera how it's done. Um, from, our, from the comments we, we received from, from our customers, uh, when we compare the, the, the startup and shutdown process, especially when the flotation systems are not automated, it can be uh, much more simple. So the operators, don't need to have an understanding of what's going on on the system in terms of physics of uh, uh, water saturation and uh, adjusting of the of the recirculation pump and so on to to successfully operate the system. Uh, I want to say that now we are operating at 0 0.5 bars. This means that uh, we started up the system. Uh, now we start simulating the the, the flow conditions at uh, 30 kilometers per hour, and uh, this took four minutes. So approximately four minutes for us to, to start up the, the, the process. Uh, normally it takes less. It's just because we are doing it here uh, manually. And now we have to wait. Uh, I'm also seeing it here on camera. I'm seeing that the, 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 the surface of the tank is, start, is starting to, to turn white. And we might need a couple of, of, of minutes more. So in the meantime, I will uh, talk a little bit more uh, about our experience and background of why we, we are doing this as well. Um, other feedback we get from the market is uh, especially from the drivers that our customers have told us why they've gone for, for micro technology. It's uh, often related to uh, challenges that they encounter with other uh, flotation technologies. And these are mostly related to dealing, for example, with uh, variable loading rates of solids in the influence or dealing with uh, uh, problems of uh, nozzle clogging or like often replacement of parts in, in uh, recirculation pumps. So this is like the different things that we've heard, like the direct feedback we get from the market. And uh, just for the sake of seeing uh, where we stand and uh, what is your opinion on this? So what is the, the main operational challenge in, in, uh, in the industry for flotation systems? We're going to drop in another poll question as we, as we wait uh, to go and see the white water. Um, so now you should see uh, a poll question on the screen. Uh, so here you can just make your, your choice. And, uh, and then we just do the same thing as we did before. We'll comment the results and we, and we'll share them with you.
I'm seeing that, uh, yeah, most of you are replying. So let's uh, wait a couple of uh, additional seconds. And then we can, uh, we can, uh, we can look at the results. 17%, okay. I'm seeing so far that uh, one of the, the biggest uh, ones is uh, unreli unreliable removal of efficiencies or uh, water generation, although there's not a massive winner uh, so far from what I'm seeing. Okay, uh, let's close it and see 48% of you, well, 51, it's going up, okay. Yeah, we're gonna end it. And uh, it seems that uh, from those of you who replied, uh, most of you think that uh, the main problem is unreliable uh, efficiencies. And uh, I think it's followed by reliable white water generation. Okay. Um, so we, we think that, uh, uh, so many of these issues can be addressed. For example, nozzle cloggage or breakage of recirculation pump can be solved or addressed by uh, micro exploitation systems, basically because we don't have these elements. And uh, if you avoid these sort of elements, this has a direct result as well, for example, in the, in the reliable white water generation, because you don't have these shutdowns uh, or also maintenance problems related to them. Uh, and also the, 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 re the removal efficiency should be more reliable. But I would be very happy to actually discuss this in more detail with any of you at, at any time. Um, as we wait uh, for Janik's uh, okay to go and see the, the white water, um, I wanted to introduce one more topic that has actually not been talked about. And I believe this is probably gonna be a recurrent question. Uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, cleaning and uh, maintenance. So uh, as I mentioned at the beginning, the microgas is a self-cleaning device. Um, so how do we, achieve or how do we manage to keep the surface of the disk clean and in conditions of producing high quality microbubbles. Uh, we do this uh, in first place by its cleaning effect. So the rotation and the fact that there's a constant flow of bubbles coming out of the, throughout the whole surface no, of the disk. Sorry to interrupt, but the white water is ready. Okay, so I'll keep on talking later. We're gonna go, we're gonna stop the, the watch here and we're gonna go and see the white water first of all. So um, right now the streaming camera is going to be picked up. So bear with us if there is a little bit of movement. Um, so we are, it's just handheld. We will take it down now and uh, we will show you the, the pressure that we are operating at and the pressure at which we are generating white water. So here is our manometer. I hope that you can see the values. We are operating at 0 0.5 bars. So as you know, like in conventional technologies to generate white water, you need to operate between three and six bars. To the right, uh, this element is just the, the manual pressure regulating valve that we use to adjust the pressure here today. And on the right side is the, the timer. It's uh, eight minutes and 50 seconds. Uh, it was the full time that it took for us to to generate the, the bubble bed. Uh, as I said before, uh, the unit was started after four minutes. Okay, so now we're gonna go and see, take a closer look at the white water. So follow me and uh, we will place the camera on top of the tank so that you can see what is going on inside it. So basically we're gonna place the camera here and I'm just gonna go around the tank and I'll keep on talking and explaining what's going on from there. So yes, bear with me for a second and uh, I'll see you in a second. So here we are, uh, what you see here is the, the surface of the tank. The bubble bed is fully formed. Um, this area here is the, the flotation zone or what we call the flotation zone. And that area over there is the contact zone. 
actually, I'm not sure to what extent you can see it, but uh, there's a little bit more turbulence there. And then this zone here is uh, completely in still stand. Um, there's a baffle separating both areas. So the microgas is installed there, and there's a baffle between the, the two zones. The bubble bed has approximately 30 to 40 centimeters of, of depth. Um, and just to give you a little bit of, uh, of additional data about this unit, about this test stand, so it has a footprint of around uh, three square meters and uh, a volume of 3.6 uh, cubic meters, which means that currently we are operating it at an HRT of around seven minutes. Um, and I think that's, uh, that's it for, for what we can explain from this point. And I think I'm going to go now to the, to the Q&A. Uh, I think we are good on time, as far I've, as, as I understand. And uh, we, we will talk a little bit about maintenance. That was a pending topic as well during the Q&A. So hopefully there are some maintenance questions. So I'm just going to reposition myself, and I see you in a second. Okay, perfect. So we are ready to start the Q&A. And actually I'm going just to briefly introduce again uh, my uh, colleague, Melanie. She's, the, as I said before, the lead process engineer. She's the, the person who is in charge of uh, process design uh, for specifically for flotation systems, both for new plants and also for, for retrofitting. So hello, Melanie, welcome to, to, to live. Hello, hello everyone. OK, so let's bring in some questions. Um, and uh, Melanie, please uh, just drop in the first question. And, uh, and then we can just uh, decide as we go along who is uh, replying. Um, OK, how did you calculate the 0 0.05 kilowatt hours per cubic meter? Uh, I think, uh, Melanie, you can uh, go ahead and explain this in, in more detail than I can. <laughs> Yes, of course. Uh, so we have considered the motor and the compressor for calculating this. Um, compared to a normal dissolved air flotation system, um, normally in that case is the recirculation pump that's, that is consuming the most of the energy. So in this case, as we are not having the recirculation pump, we are comparing our motor and compressor to get uh, to the uh, recirculation uh, pump and compressor of the recirculation pump. So we are always keeping under this value, be independent of the salinity of the water or the temperature. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, Melanie. Uh, let's go to the next one. So the motor is inside, outside the tank. Um, so this is a straightforward question. The motor is inside the tank. It's under the shaft and it's uh, installed within the contact zone, it's completely submersible. All the elements are submersible. Hope that that answered the question. Let's, let's go to the next one. Uh, what maintenance uh, procedures are required? Um, OK, I'm happy about this question because I actually didn't have time to, to explain this before. Um, I'm just going to talk about the cleaning procedures. And maybe, Melanie, you can explain later a little bit about the maintenance. I think that's more, more your area. So about the cleaning procedures, uh, we managed to keep the unit clean uh, due to the self-cleaning effect of two components, the rotation. And the other one is the, the fact that there's little contact between the water and the disc because there's a cushion of bubbles. So there's a constant flow of bubbles throughout the whole surface of the disc. So this means that even in metalworking installations where we have uh, uh, our longest experience, uh, the, and, where, and there's very high uh, mineral oils uh, concentration in these waters. Uh, there's very limited uh, uh, contact or fouling due to due to, to these agents. Um, of course, uh, chemical cleanings are are also uh, required at, at some point, and we do this by injecting chemicals into the airline, uh, and we can do this with the unit completely submerged in the contact zone. So the idea is that the 
the, the cleaning procedures take place with the unit completely submerged in the tank and without having to, to extract it, of course, and to, without having to, to drain the tank. Um, we also do the tune-up that you saw today. We, we, we usually automate it so that it takes place once a day. This is just like a, a, a regular um, procedure that makes sure that all the pores are available for, for the bubble formation and also keeps uh, clean the contact zone and the, and the unit. Mary, uh, Melanie, can you say something about the, the maintenance on the other hand? Yes, of course. So regarding the maintenance, depending on the application and the operational setup, uh, we recommend uh, to change some spare parts. Uh, normally it's only ceilings. And after a certain amount of hour, operational hours, so normally it's after three years, um, and um, regarding also the discs, I think this is also important. The lifetime, the expected lifetime of the discs are more than 10 years. Of course, if there's a mechanical damage, you have to change them, but um, we are able to train our customers and our partners to do the, that by themselves. So it's very easy to do. Okay, thank you, Melanie. Uh, let's go to the, to the next question. Okay, I think this is a question for me. Uh, someone is asking about the, the price of the, of the unit that we are talking about here today. Um, what, what I can say is that uh, what we know and uh, is that we are competitive in CAPEX when we talk about full flotation plants. So uh, most of our customers are system integrators and most of the time they're companies that have been integrating flotation systems uh, by themselves uh, for a long time with other technologies, let's say uh, two-phase pumps or conventional uh, flotation systems. And uh, when they take in microgas technology and they think, take in our design recommendations, what they find is that we are competitive in CAPEX. So we are eliminating a lot of components and we can also reduce the size, uh, the volume of the tank, meaning that uh, there's a lot of savings uh, associated to this. So the, the, the answer I can give you is that we are competitive in, in CAPEX and that we are more competitive, much more competitive in terms of energy consumption and lower maintenance, which means that in terms of uh, life cycle costs, uh, we, we are better positioned than, uh, than conventional technologies. Um, I hope that uh, replied the question. Um, if we talk about, uh, yeah, if we talk about retrofitting, for example, I mentioned already before, we can have uh, very, very interesting ROIs. Uh, but of course, we have to study that case by case as well. If anyone wants uh, to know uh, more about the price, uh, or I, I just invite you to, to send us an inquiry for a specific project, and we will study it. We will, uh, we will provide uh, a full uh, equipment list so that you can actually evaluate what is the cost of the whole flotation system using microgas and not only look at the price of the element. Let's move to the, to the next question. Okay, um, just, before, just before we, uh, we go answer the next question, uh, I'm just gonna say that we're coming to the end, let's say of the 60 minutes that, uh, that, uh, that were planned. However, we're gonna stay uh, for another 10 minutes because we have a lot of unreplied questions. Uh, but for those of you who have to go, that who don't have the time to stay, I just want to thank you. Thank you very much for, for joining us. It was a real pressure. I hope that you enjoyed it, that you learned uh, of our technology and uh, yes, rest assured that everything will be online. So you will not miss the upcoming questions. They will be available on online. And we are also going to, to make uh, the, best, uh, uh, the best we can to answer all the other remaining questions. So we just will send you an email, follow up email so that we can uh, establish a communication with you and answer any remaining questions. So thank you very much. Hope you enjoyed it and don't hesitate, hesitate to, to get in, in uh, contact with us. You can contact us through inquiries at agvola.com. And that's all for now. I continue with the next question um, because we also don't have, uh, we also only have 10 additional minutes. So, sorry, the previous question, I think I missed it. It was, uh, what is the bubble size? Melanie, that's, uh, maybe you can explain a little bit more about that. I think I mentioned it before, but go ahead. Yes, the average bubble size is uh, 40 micrometers. So we are in between 40 micrometers, 60 micrometers, and it's a very homogeneous uh, size distribution. 
I, I just want to add a comment on that. So uh, from the, let's say, I realized since we started uh, commercializing microgas that this is something used uh, often very commercially. Uh, but we also realized that uh, when we uh, when we ask uh, other suppliers or other technology providers how did they measure their bubble size, then uh, it's uh, everyone measured it in a different with a different method. Uh, and there's no standard method to measure to measure bubble size. Which that that came as a surprise for us at the beginning. And we're actually currently involved in ISO norms that uh, are targeting to create a standard so that this could be, let's say, uh, compared across all the range of flotation technologies. Uh, so we we don't see it as a, such a reliable way of comparing uh, performances uh, between between different flotation technologies. What we concentrate in is in removal efficiencies. So we we want to see what the bubble does and how the white water behaves on on real installations. Okay, the next question: uh, What do you implement? Uh, do you plan to implement drop-in installation in the smaller models too? Um, okay, so. I think this is uh, uh, this is something that's uh, a possibility as well that we will do in the future. Um, but for smaller installations, the 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 S series works really well. Uh, normally, plants that are smaller are also more compact and are also not in civil works. So actually, perforating the wall of the tank is not a problem, and it also has the advantage that you have the motor available from from the outside of of the tank. So we are uh, not planning to, to change this in the short term, although we are open to any market feedback as well and uh, to consider this in our R&D for the future. Let's go to the next question. Uh, do you have specific applications of CO2 gas, oxygen, or nitrogen gas? My company produces air gases. We would like to inform our customers of possible, possible offering solution. Actually, this opens a complete uh, different uh, world as well. So actually, we are not only using microgas for flotation only. We do have already commercial installations of microgas for gas transfer. So this includes uh, CO2 gas transfer, and it includes as well ozonation. Uh, but this seminar was about flotation. And uh, therefore, I didn't mention this before. But yes, so the, the device can be used for Flotation with other gases, of course, and it can also be used for gas transfer. We have an extremely high um, gas transfer efficiency with microgas. Um, I'm really happy to discuss further about this, uh, so please do contact us or we will get back to you on this. Uh, but let's go to the next question now. Can you supply with a duplex or super duplex stainless steel for the metallic parts? I believe the answer is yes, but I'll pass it over to, to Melanie. I think she knows uh, better about this. Yes, of course. We um, normally offer customized solutions. So um, depending on the water quality, we are also selecting the materials proper for that. In case, I think this question refers to seawater at high temperatures. So yes, we could uh, supply in the place, no problem. Great. Uh, Let's go to, to and the next question. Um, can the tuna be automated? Yes, absolutely. Actually, uh, we can supply as well uh, the program and the elements that uh, are required to, to do this. Uh, so it's, uh, it's something that if the plant is very small, uh, it's maybe not necessary. But if we are talking about larger scale installations, uh, we would normally recommend to yes, automate it. It's, completely automated normally. Mm -hmm. How long until the disk required to be replaced? Uh, Melanie, maybe you can, I think you replied this before, but. Y yes, it, it has to do with the, with the lifetime of the disk. So um, if you're keeping the best practices, uh, the lifetime of the disk should be more than 10 years. So of, also if you're, Using the cleaning procedures, there's no requirement to replace them, unless, of course, you have a mechanical damage and uh, you have to change it. Yeah, so I would add here that uh, so far, we have not uh, had to replace this for, uh, let's say, a drop in performance. It's only been due to problems, uh, mechanical problems. And when we say mechanical problems are, for example, dropping a tool on the, on the unit or uh, dropping the unit when it was going to be installed. It's like once the unit is up running, 
there's no there's there hasn't been the need to replace discs for a drop in performance. And from what from our experience, we we can project that uh, the disc uh, will easily last uh, over ten years. It's a ceramic material which is very chemically stable. Uh, it's just fragile in that in that way. Okay, how long until the disc? Let's go to the next question then. <laughs> In the questions, I was missing metal work with cooling lubricants and oil. Is this usable also for this? Um, yes, it is uh, usable for metal working. Maybe Melanie, uh, you want to add something here? Um, yes, of course. Uh, so this is uh, we we have a lot of experiences in this kind of waters. Um, we normally also for some emulsified oils uh, consider. Um, some splitters to to improve the separation, and uh, we also have a lot of experience uh, in selecting the chemicals for pretreatment. So please go ahead; like you can contact us if you have a um, like a difficult water to treat. Uh, we can also help you with that. Okay, let's go to the next question now. What design parameters should we consider? For that tank, surface area, geometry, bubble dispersion area. Melanie, please go ahead. I think you, you can uh, give a better answer than I do here. Yes, of course. So here we are not changing the principle of flotation. We're just changing the way how to produce the micro bubbles. So in terms of designing um, the complete flotation system, it's very similar to a conventional DAF, but of course not considering the recirculation. Um, so we are considering also solid loading rates, so surface area, um, also the geometry, if it's conical or not, uh, if you have uh, also solids that could settle. We are also have designed with lamellar um, settlers um, before the flotation. Um, also the air to solids ratio is important and of course the residence time. Okay. Thank you, Melanie. Let's go to the next question. What are the smallest bubbles you can produce and at what pressure? Um, Melanie, maybe you can reply this one as well. Yes, in the case of Micros Excel, for example, um, the operational pressure, as you saw, is 0 0.5 bars. Um, and we are now rotating the motor at 150 RPM, RPMs, so the bubble size is depending on the air pressure and the rotational speed mainly. So the smallest bubble that we can achieve are for the micro Excel, that, uh, that point, of course, the pressure can vary be because of the water column depending on the water height of the tank, of the system. Okay, so I'm not sure uh, what is the, the smallest uh, uh, size of the bubble, but uh, as, as Melanie yeah. said, it, it depends yeah. on the rotation and, uh, and on the pressure. So normally lower pressure and, and more rotation results in smaller bubbles. I don't know if you want to add anything. So otherwise, let's, let's go to, to the next question. What will be the solid uh, removal rate? Um, I think, uh, maybe Melanie, you want to add something? What, uh, what is uh, sure is that uh, our removal rates are very similar to conventional DAF. So uh, we've done a lot of pilots. So this was uh, yeah, the initial stage of development. Uh, one of the main activities was to actually place a microgas uh, plant in parallel to a operating uh, flotation system and comparing the, the performances using the same chemical dosage and the same operational settings as far as possible. And uh, the conclusion is that uh, in a well-operated DAF and microgas, the differences are not uh, very significant. So sometimes for some specific type of waters, we observe like three, four percent high removal efficiencies. But uh, let's say the, the USP of microgas, what's important of microgas is not specifically that we are providing a higher removal rate. It's more about the simplification, the energy uh, efficiency, the lower, the lower maintenance and so on. Okay. Um, now we we are gonna uh, we're gonna go for for the last question. So we we've reached uh, almost uh, the end of the extra ten minutes. 
So please, uh, team, uh, go for, for the last question. Is it possible to increase the capacity of the flotation plant by retrofitting? OK, I think I, I mentioned this uh, at some point through, through, the, through the session. But uh, um, basically, the, the answer is, is yes. So normally, the drivers that we, we find in, uh, in the market for retrofitting are often systems that are not performing well. And normally, what we identify for us, uh, the, 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 the trend is that it's related to solids. So systems that uh, have trouble handling the solids that usually end up in the recirculation stream uh, have uh, caused issues with, uh, with the elements in the recirculation stream uh, from the pump to the impeller to the, to the, to the nozzles. And uh, this arrived in uh, unhappy end users, let's say. Um, when we go on, on the site, what we do is we eliminate this, uh, this uh, re recirculation stream. And uh, therefore, we can keep the HRT that these systems were initially designed for, but increase the flow rate. So normally, if we go to, let's say, um, a food and beverage industry with, a, let's say, 20% recirculation rate, uh, this recirculation rate is eliminated, and then we can uh, increase the total throughput of actual treatment flow rate through the system uh, without having to increase the size of the tank. So um, I hope that answered the question there. So as I said, we eliminate the, the, the recirculation uh, stream, and we can increase the treatment flow rate uh, without, uh, without uh, uh, having to increase the volume of the tank and without changing the HRT that's normally set as a time that you need to separate the solids from, from the liquid. Um, now I have to finish the, the session. Um, thank you everyone for, for joining us. It was uh, overwhelming. I, I think we had around 170 people with us today from all over the world. I think uh, everyone was greeting me from India, from Greece, Spain, everywhere. So thank you, thank you very much. Um, I really hope you enjoyed it. I really hope that you, you grasped uh, the concept of the innovation behind uh, Microgas. And uh, we really look forward to supporting you uh, commercially or technically in upcoming projects you may have. As you said, you can, you can reach us where, however you like, through LinkedIn, through our website, sending an email to inquiries at agola.com. And uh, besides that, I just want to say thank you again. Have a great day and uh, hope to see you next time. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone. See you soon.